Hey guys, welcome back. This is Phil from Cage.com. Today we're going to take a look at the LG Q6, their first full vision enabled mid-ranger phone. Let's take a slightly different approach and start with the things that I don't exactly like about this phone. Uh, firstly, the rear material. It gets scratched up way too easily. I'm pretty sure that I take a moderately good care of my phones and it started getting scratches the minute that I unboxed the phone. And secondly, the full vision display that LG was really proud about is really pale. It has a color temperature around 8000K, which is a lot cooler than the standard 6500K. And the worst part is that there is no color temperature mode. Xiaomi has it, Huawei has it, Samsung of course has it, but LG does not. The only thing close to it is the comfort view, which when set on low turns the screen to around 6500K standard, but this still does not allow you to micro control your color temperature. There's only three levels, low, medium, high, or black and white. So a simple color temperature option would be much appreciated. And one more thing about the panel is that they sharpened the display too much. I said this on the G3 review, the LG's first QHD panel, and it still has sharpened effect already pre-applied on the screen. When you blur out the background, it gets more apparent. You can see the outline of the letters there are a lot more aggressive than it is on the other phones. And while I do understand that due to unorthodox screen ratio, it can't fill all the screens into full screen. But Galaxy S8 has the option where it stretches out for you, cut top and bottom, or make it full screen if the contents happen to have the suiting ratio. And this guy does not have the feature, so if you're watching a 16 to 9 ratio video, you will have the black space on the left and right hand side corner. And something that surprised me even more is that it does not have the tactic feedback. When you tap on the soft key button there, or press the things on the dial pad, or type on your keyboard, it does not vibrate. This is something that older and cheaper LG phones even had. LG must have intentionally removed it from the phone. Next up, camera can be launched from two ways. You can pull the icon from there, or you can quickly press the volume down key twice. And the camera quality is simply bad. It has f2.2 lenses front and back, and f2.2 is really, really dark. Samsung Galaxy J7 2017 has f1.7 lenses. And narrower the aperture of the lenses are, the longer shutter speed that they have to have to have the same amount of lighting. And slower shutter speed naturally means that it's going to be more prone to shaky photos. Focusing on the lower lighting environment is really, really slow, meaning that you will have noticeable shutter lag between the photos. Compared to that, photos in the brighter lighting conditions are better, but they're often oversaturated. Wide angle front facing camera is definitely better. You can just tap on that icon to get a wider view of the camera. But thanks to the f2.2 darker camera, it still is far from being great. The biggest nuisance of the phone is that it does not have a fingerprint reader. Yes, you heard it right, it's 2017, a phone from LG does not have a fingerprint reader on the back nor on the front. You have to rely on face recognition, which is the same old technology that dates all the way back to ice cream sandwich era. They did make it slightly better when you raise up the phone, it knows that you're trying to unlock the phone and it automatically starts trying to recognize your face trying because it doesn't work in the darker environment. And on top of that, speaker location is another thing that I don't like. It's on the back. Usually phones have it on the bottom or on the side in case of Galaxy J series or A series, but it has on the back, which is a position that's going to get easily blocked when put on a desk. and it obviously gets blocked and the speaker quality, which is already bad when unblocked, gets even worse. Sure, you can use the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the bottom or use your Bluetooth headset, but it does not have the audio effects, meaning that you cannot customize your audio equalizer compared to the other phones like Galaxy or Xiaomi, which has all that. Another thing that's not 2017 is that micro USB port on the bottom. Yes, some of the competitors also use the micro USB for their cheaper offerings, and I can get away with that, except that it doesn't even support quick charge. Fully charging this phone takes mere two full hours. And with the phones getting bigger batteries every now and then, two hours might not sound too bad, except that first 30 minute charging only gives you 30% of the charge. Compared to that, quick charge enabled devices will give you up to 50% of charge with that same half an hour. Oh, and I kept the best part for the last and it's the heat management. It has heat right there and it's pretty serious. It has Snapdragon 435 processor and LG couldn't even manage Snapdragon 435's heat management. It gets pretty hot even for just watching your YouTube video on LT Network for 10 minutes. I'm actually surprised that LG is able to make such low power processor have heat problem. And now it's time to move on to the bright side. Well, it does have a solid build. It's got a 7000 series aluminum on the side. It's got a glass on the front and it's got a, you know, it's got a wide screen on the front. It looks and feels pretty nice. 
and also it's 5.5 inches and since they measure the screen size diagonally with that 18 to 9 ratio this is a lot narrower than the conventional 5.5 inches it fits really nicely in the hand and while they kill the haptic feedback it has all the necessary sensors magnetic gyroscope orientation light sensor everything you need is pretty much included there and also performance is not that bad snapdragon 435 paired up with 3 gigabytes of ram launching everything is not that bad it's not blazingly fast but compared to previous LG devices, the optimization is definitely not bad. And also tested under VLT network, call quality is actually pretty good. The receiver volume is loud and crisp, and the other party could have heard me well. And if you're a fan, it's got an FM radio built in, though you're going to need a wired earphones to use it as an antenna. And most importantly, the battery performance is actually good. Uh, it was able to give me about 5 hours of screen on time, and that is with me using LT network all the time and web surfing pretty hard. So if you're more of a Wi-Fi user and uses less of the web surfing and more of a lighter test, then you should be able to gain an hour or two more out of what I had. And also, unlike the previous LG devices, it doesn't kill itself off at 4% out of blue. So that's peace of mind there. Now, I have told you enough about the LG Q6 and it's time for me to give you the verdict. And my answer is going to depend heavily on the price that you have to pay to get this. If you have to pay the European price or the South Korean price, which is around 350 euros, then it's a definite no. You shouldn't get this phone at all costs. No, that's a nada. But if you're in India, where they sell this phone around 15,000 rupees, that's around 230 US dollars, then it might not be too bad of a choice. Although I still think that with this terrible heat management, with this pale screen and no fingerprint reader, I think you have a plenty of other options, especially if you're in India. You guys have all the brands there. You guys have Samsung, you guys have Huawei, you guys have Xiaomi. Why get a key six? If you like the full vision display at a budget price, not exactly budget even, then Maybe, but I still do want to suggest you some other great choices like Xiaomi Redmi Note 4X, which has a better processor, better heat management, better camera, and better battery performance. And also it has a fingerprint reader. The choice is yours, but I really wouldn't suggest this to anyone at any price. So that was my quick look at the LG Q6. I hope it helped. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment. You can always meet us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Google+, and we'll see you guys later. Ciao.